This is the Homestead Journey Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the pursuit of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. This is episode number 42 of the Homestead Journey Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. If you are new to the podcast, welcome to you. And if you are a longtime listener, thank you so much for taking time out of your day on a weekly basis to listen to me talk about homesteading. My name is Brian Wells. I'm coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And well, folks, normally at this point, I tell you what kind of a week we've had here on the homestead. But you know what? I have no idea. You see, when this episode drops, hopefully we will have just gotten back from our family vacation. And so I am recording this actually the Thursday before we leave to go on vacation. And then I will be putting it up to be downloaded that Sunday evening into Monday, as is my usual custom. I didn't want to skip an episode. I'm trying to keep the momentum going as the podcast has been growing. But this week will not have a homestead happenings because I have no idea what took place. Now, if I had a crystal ball, maybe I could tell you what took place. (laughs) Hopefully everything went well. Uh, Hopefully there were no major issues or incidents. But uh, we are on vacation this week. Actually, we... Now, how do I put this? We're going on vacation. You're listening to this after the fact, so we were on vacation. That's kind of tough. But our plan is to uh, spend a week in the Niagara Falls, uh, New York area. Very excited about that. I have been very, very blessed to spend quite a bit of time over in that area simply because when I was younger, we had some good friends that lived in uh, North Tonawanda, New York. And so we would spend... I believe it was New Year's with them. It might pop up another time or two during the year. And then my mom and dad actually lived for a while in North Tonawanda, New York. And so my wife and I had the opportunity to visit them when they were living there. And then in 2003, I actually had LASIK eye surgery done just across the river over in Niagara Falls, Canada. And I believe that was the last time... I was in the Niagara Falls area. Uh, my son has never been, and so I am very excited for him to be able to uh, to see the falls and also to experience a few things that I have never done, and that is uh, to go to Cave of the Winds and to also do the Maid of the Mist. So very excited about that. Those attractions are currently open. Hopefully it stays that way. Uh As I record this, obviously we are in the midst of the whole COVID thing, and our dear governor, King Andrew II, as I call him, uh, has kind of been threatening to shut things back down again, so we'll see what happens. But uh, hopefully, as you're listening to this, we will have returned from a vacation rested and relaxed, renewed, reinvigorated, and ready to go. Anyhow, let's jump on over to this week's Charting the Course. Since there is no homestead happenings, I'm sure there was stuff that happened on the homestead. I just have no idea what they were. (laughs) So let's jump right on over to this week's Charting the Course. On this week's Charting the Course, I'm going to share with you how we go on vacation. When you are a homesteader, vacations can be a bit tricky and a bit complicated. Now, vacations in and of themselves can be tricky and complicated. Trying to figure out where you're going to go, where you're going to stay, what you're going to do, who's going to go with you, who shouldn't go with you, all of those kinds of things can be a complicated part of going on vacation. But certainly, adding a homestead on top of that levels adds a level of complication Um, that sometimes can be a little bit tricky. And so today I just want to share with you some of the things that we do on our homestead to try to be able to rest and relax when we're gone. 
The first thing is that timing is everything. Now, to be honest with you, we are not going on vacation at the most optimum time for our homestead. At this point, our garden is starting to take off and we are starting to achieve that abundant harvest. And I hate leaving this time of the year. The reason why we are actually going this time of the year has to do with the whole COVID situation. I wanted to push it off long enough so that we could kind of see how things were going and whether or not things were open back up. But I also didn't want to push it too far out because this time of the year, like I said, is when things really start taking off and you get into the middle part of August. And at that point, we are just going like gangbusters. What we have found here on our homestead is that if we are going to take a summer vacation, the sweet spot for us is the end of June into the first part of July. And the reason is that at that point, we have our garden in the ground, our meat birds are processed and at freezer camp, our pullets are out of the brooder, our piglets are weaned, and really, we don't have a lot of stuff coming on in the garden. We might have some radishes, we might have a few peas, but it's still a little bit early for those things for us. And so, at that point, we find a little bit of a lull in our summer, based on how we do things here on our homestead. Now, depending on where you're at and your growing season, it might be a little sooner than that, it might be a little later than that, or that might not even apply to you. It may take a little bit of trial and error <laughs> for you to figure out where the sweet spot is for you to be able to go on vacation. But certainly, timing is everything. And, you know, at this time of the year, this is when people want to go on vacation, right? You have people that want you to go do things with you. You've got family that wants you to go here, there, and everywhere. And they might want you to go camping for a weekend, or they might want you to go to the lake for a week, or whatever. And when you have a homestead, it, well, it just makes life complicated. Having a homestead changes things. <laughs> it's kind of like when you have a toddler in your home. Our son was the first grandchild on either side of the family. And my brother Keith didn't really understand that when you have a two-year-old, you just aren't footloose and fancy free any longer. And so he would call me up on a Thursday and be like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I don't know. And he would say, why well, do we go do blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. But what are we going to do with Brian J? Oh, well, just bring him along. Yeah, but when you've got a two-year-old, it doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> Anybody who's had kids understands that it's a production to get them out the door and you have schedules and you don't want to mess with nap time and uh, all of those kinds of things. And so it's the same way with a homestead. Your homestead, to a certain extent, is your baby. Now, you can certainly put in place systems and you can put in place uh, simplification so that uh, it's not quite as complicated, but certainly timing is key and having a homestead, well, it changes things. Once you've determined the timing of when you're going to take vacation, the next thing you need to think about is who's going to take care of things while I'm gone. Now, some people will go on vacation at different times. So maybe the husband goes on vacation for a while and then the wife goes on vacation for a while. I've never thought that was very appealing. I want to go on a family vacation. I love my wife. I like hanging out with my wife. I love my family. I want to spend time with them. But that's what some people do. They try not to have both people off the homestead at the same time. I have other friends that, well, they have pigs, they've got chickens, um, they might have a bit of a garden, but they have it set up so that they, they have a, maybe a large feeder. So they, and they free feed their pigs. So they just fill the feeder full of feed. They've got automatic water set up. They fill the chicken feeders full of feed and they can go away for a weekend or they can go away for four or five days. And they might have a friend pop in and check on things maybe a couple of times. But other than that, they have systems in place whereby 
uh, or the size of their homestead is such whereby they don't need to worry about having anybody come in on a regular basis or on a daily basis to do the quote-unquote chores. On the other hand, I know of people who their homesteads are so large, they have so many animals and so many things going on, that if they go away on vacation, they need to hire a full-time farm sitter and have somebody come in and spend the week uh, taking care of their animals, taking care of their chores, uh, taking care of their farm stand, whatever it is that they've got going on, they have to have somebody come in and manage that the week that they're gone. We fall somewhere in between we do need to have somebody come in on a daily basis. In fact, we have to have people come in twice a day because we feed the pigs in the morning, we feed the pigs in the evening. And so we have to have somebody come in twice a day while we are on vacation. Now, we are very, very lucky in that my mom and dad live not that far away. And so usually my dad will cover either morning or evening depending on what his work schedule is. And then we have a circle of friends that are great people And so they will come in and cover our chores the other time. Now, what do I do? I try to take care of them, shall we say. I thank them with uh, some chicken or some bacon or some vegetables or some eggs or whatever. Something to say to them, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to help me out. I know some people who will hire a teenager. Maybe they need chores done once a day. They just need somebody to come in and feed the chickens and gather the eggs and put some water in the chickens and maybe check the garden. And so they will have a teenager come in and do it. But you need to think about your homestead, what you have going on, and then think, do I need somebody here 24-7 the entire week I'm gone? Do I have neighbors that are willing to check on it? Do I have friends that are willing to do it? Do I have family members that are willing to do that? But certainly you need to factor in, okay, who is going to take care of things Well, I'm gone. Along with that, you need to have a detailed chore list. You need to write it out so they can follow it. How many scoops of grain does do the pigs get? How many scoops of grain do the does the chickens get? Um, All of those kinds of things. Whatever chores you want done, write them down. And as as much detail as possible, because certainly you can go through and show people everything that you do, but they don't do it every day like you do it. And so you show them once, and maybe it's a week before they are going to do the chores while you're gone, and then they come back and it's, oh, where's this and where's that and where's the other thing? So come up with a written to-do list of exactly what you expect to have done. Number three, try to make it as easy as possible. Simplify, 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 simplify. And some of this might mean that you need to think weeks in advance. And what I mean by that is this, if you are moving poultry around, let's say you've got chicken tractors and you're moving poultry around, try to have the chicken tractor as close to the house as possible or as close to the the feed as possible or as close to the water as possible when your farm sitters are doing the chores. You know, yeah, we sometimes, we, we've got the, you know, the chicken tractor over in Bukuville, you know, way over on the back 40, and we don't think anything about carting the feed over there and dropping the water over there or those kinds of things. But when you've got somebody who's coming in and taking care of things in your absence, be considerate and make sure that things are as simplified as possible for them. One of the things that I did is I have a sow right now who uh, I wean the piglets from her. She's still on her own because I'm trying to bring her back into really good condition And I had her in a pen by herself with a rubber waterer, rubber dish for her waterer. And she flips that over all the time. And I just take more water out to her. But I could reconfigure that pig area so that she had access to a 55-gallon waterer. And so I did that so that my farm sitter, while I'm gone, my dad, my friends, are not having to haul water to her. So what did I do? I simplified things. 
So think about ways that you can maybe bring flocks together or closer together or closer to the feed, closer to the water, so that the chores are as simplified as possible. Number five, make sure you have enough feed for your animals. Maybe buy an extra bag or two just to be sure. You know, your farm sitter may accidentally overfeed. You may end up running out of feed while you're gone. You don't want that. So make sure you have enough feed on hand. Number six, check your fences and your energizers before you leave. The last thing you want is to have your farm sitters or your friends or your parents chasing your pigs or your cows or whatever all over Timbuktu because your fence wasn't good or your energizer somehow became disconnected. Check your fences and check your energizers before you leave. Finally, make sure you have a first aid kit available and you leave the number of your vet if that is applicable to you. Obviously, you can't really expect your farm sitters, especially if they're not people who are used to being around animals, to be able to provide the level of care that you yourself probably would if an animal was injured. Uh, on your property while you were there, but at least have some things available so that if there is something simple that they can do, maybe you've got a chicken that gets in a fight with another chicken and she's bleeding from her comb. So say, hey, listen, there's a crate in the storage shed. Please put the chicken in there. Spray some blue coat on the comb. Give it some feed and water. I'll handle it when I get back. That's something that a farm sitter probably would be able to do. Now, obviously, if you've got a pig with a broken leg, well, at that point, you're probably going to need to have them call in a vet or else you're going to need to come home from vacation. Depending on where you're at, though, that may not be such a great idea for your animal. So you certainly want to have some contingency plans in the back of your mind in case something were to happen to your animals while you're gone, how those things would be handled. Now, this certainly isn't a comprehensive list. These are some of the things that I try to do when we're going on vacation so that I can have some peace of mind, rest and relaxation, so that I can come back rejuvenated and recharged and ready to do this homesteading thing all over again. So let's run through that list one more time. Timing is everything. Make sure you think through when you're going to go. Uh, and what you have going on your on on your homestead during that time frame. Think about who's going to cover your chores while you're gone. Do you have friends, neighbors? Do you need to hire a farm sitter? Or can you get away with not doing anything? Have a detailed chore list and try to make it as easy as possible. Make sure you have enough feed on hand. Check your fences and your energizers before you leave and have a first aid kit available along with your vet's number. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any other great tips or tricks with regards to going on vacation, I would love to hear them. Go ahead and send them to me, brian at thehomesteadjourney.net or you can reach out to us on Instagram, Facebook and send me a message or leave me a comment. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you jump on over to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever it is that you like to consume your podcast content and leave us a review, a thumbs up, whatever that platform allows that helps other people find the, the podcast. And it also provides me with a bit of encouragement to keep doing this. Like I said, we are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, so follow us there. Give us a like, subscribe, whatever it is that the platform uh, requires. I post stuff throughout the week, and so that will help keep you up to date with everything that we have going on here on The Homestead. And then you can also check out our website, thehomesteadjourney.net. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. As always, the music on this episode is provided by Audionautics.com, so a big shout-out to them. And until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.